And, oh, it was reconnecting. Good morning, everyone. I think we're here. Yes, we are. Okay, my name is Dana, and um, I'm here with Love Solo Flowers. And the theme of this week um, is arranging. Um, so we put out a blog on Monday about arranging flowers and your life and how to find balance and rhythm and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but today we're going to do a centerpiece box and kind of put those principles um, to work in um, actually making a centerpiece box. Hey Stacy. So I will give it just a few minutes to let people jump on. Um, but um, we are going to make a box today. It's actually for a customer. Um, she wanted, I made a mermaid dyed collection a while back, so she wanted those colors um, in a centerpiece box. So that's what we're going to be using. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Good morning, Sandy. Um, I do have people here. Hey guys, just so you know, I'm on live. <laughs> um, we do have some people um, coming in for retreat this weekend. And so um, they're here in the background putting stuff together for our retreat. We have a solo retreat um, starting Thursday. Is that tomorrow? Yes, yeah, starting tomorrow and going to Sunday. So um, we're here in New Jersey. Hey, Nancy. You're up early then. Um, so it's 9.30 here on the East Coast. But uh, we are prepping for a weekend retreat of Sola stuff, and we're so excited. Um, but today we're still going to be talking um, about our theme um, for the week, which is arranging. So if you're just jumping on now, um, we're going to do the centerpiece box. I've already set it up. There's foam inside, and we've covered the top with moss. Um, and I'm just going to give you some kind of principles about how to make things balanced um, and still interesting for a centerpiece box. The one that I'm doing today um, is a little bit more of a wild look, not that really tight, tight flowers. So we're going to do the greenery first. And I'm just going to show you how to do that and then put the flowers in at the end. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to jump in and start. Um, but yeah. Um, that. Okay, alrighty, here we go. So I have a bunch of um, faux greenery for this one right now, and um, what I always start with on my base is more of that fuller type greenery, not the thin, interesting kind, just the kind that fills up space. And that will give us balance to have more of that thick, leafy stuff um, on the inside, okay? So when you're making an arrangement, you're wanting the bulkier stuff to go closer to the center, closer to the piece, and you want your thinner, more wispier type things to be um, up higher, out further. So um, I'm gonna cut them up. And again, this is actually, you're not gonna really be able to see these, but this is just a faux greenery. Um, and I'm gonna fill my base first. Now, whenever I'm making an arrangement, again, for balance, and um, what I'm gonna do um, is I do one type of greenery at a time. So um, I do all of it so that that way you can kind of space it around. You don't want it to be in a pattern, but you definitely want it to be spaced out. You don't want to necessarily do clusters of things unless it's on purpose and you're going to balance it out on the other side. But um, I do one type of greenery at a time so that um, we can space it out evenly and get some balance. Okay, so I'm just going to put it right in to my foam and start there. This again, my leafier, heavier pieces are going to go low to the piece. Um, I don't want big, heavy things coming out high. So I'm just going to take this greenery and start filling up some space. And I've got the moss down so that um, I don't have to cover every single inch with greenery because um, because it's more of a wild style box and I don't want it to be so heavy and thick. So that's what I'm doing right now. So again, I'm starting with one and ask me questions if you know you have any while I'm going on here. Um, and that way, if you have questions about arranging or about balance, we can talk about those. But I always start with my heavier greens and I space them out, okay? So I have a couple other kind of heavier type greens. Um, I have this and I have one more of this one. I gotta find out where it went. Okay, so I've got these guys and I'm gonna do the same thing. I wanna make sure that 
I'm spaced enough um, from each other so that we don't have like a block of the same greens, okay? And I'm kind of going over the edge a little bit um, with some of them as well. Okay, so see how fast that was just to kind of cover? The next one I'm gonna do um, is um, this guy. And again, I'm gonna use the same one so that I can space them out and I can get a good covering of them all different places. So now these are my next, again, these were my tight ones. So these are the ones, again, for balance, the bulkier, um, thicker covering type greens are gonna go close down to the bottom and fill up my space. Um, and then these are getting like a little thinner, okay? As you can see, we started bulkier, now we're getting thinner. And I'm gonna let these come up a little bit higher than these now. And again, I'm gonna try to space them evenly without doing a pattern, without like making like, you know, I don't measure, make sure they're two inches away from each other or something like that. And these are gonna come up a little higher. And another thing about arranging, you never want things, especially that come up high, to like go straight up, okay? Like, I don't wanna put it in like this, straight up. Okay, can you, can you see that? That's straight up. I wanna do things at angles. It always looks better. You never want like bug antennas in your center pieces. So I always do angles. Okay, so as you can see, and I'm just filling in spaces. Not really a rhyme or reason, but I'm making sure that I'm not bulky in just one area with one specific green. Okay, so that's what we got so far. Any questions so far about arranging balance or any of that? Or we're just gonna keep going. Okay, so now I'm getting to the part where we're getting a little bit of height now, okay? And so I've got these guys for that. And they're bendies, okay? So I'm going to make sure that they're not standing straight up as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in and I can just kind of bend it and make like a fun shape, okay? And same thing, you're not wanting all your height just on one side, you're wanting to disperse it. Okay, so as you can see, I'm putting some all around and I'm making sure that I'm going around and I'm, <laughs> it is easy. These are easy, these kind of boxes are easy. You should be able to do a centerpiece box in a few minutes. Um, yeah, I did them in about, it takes me probably about, well, I mean prep time, but Without prep time, it should be no more than 15 minutes for one of these boxes, um, depending on how involved it gets. But um, we're just popping it right into the thing. Okay. So as you can see, I've got kind of height all different. It doesn't have to be the exact same height to be balanced, but you want height kind of all over. Lean it towards the camera so we can see the top. Like that, you mean? Okay, so I've got height in all different places. Again, if you're just joining, my name is Dana. If you haven't ever joined us before, I know we shared it on some pages. Um, we're here with Love Solo Flowers, and um, we're talking about arrangement at Love Solo Flowers this week for the theme. And so we've talked about balance and things like that. So we're just showing it to you now. Um, we talked about the principles of how to make an arrangement and, you know, balance and have rhythm. Because you want things like, Focal points. Um, if you read the blog, please read the blog because I, I actually put a whole lot of time into that blog um, about getting principles of um, how to make an arrangement balanced and have rhythm and have focal point. Um, and they're all important when you're making an arrangement. So read that. Um, but we're just going to show it to you now. So we had, if you're just joining us, in order to have a balanced piece um, with like, meaning like, he like the greenery part where it's heavier is always at the base. Okay, you wouldn't want something heavy up here. It would be like, it would be like a mushroom if you had heavy out here. So you're wanting all your heavy greenery to be nice and tight, and then all your wispier or um, thinner um, greenery to be out further. Like this, this is thinner because you see it only has like two leaves, but it has a stem. So yeah, as you can see, all that is kind of the higher part of it. Okay, hey Pam. So now I'm gonna do these guys. They're on stems, I might need to cut them, so let me just see where I need to cut them. Um, 
So again, these are now getting smaller leaves and I always do, like I was just saying before, if you are just jumping on now, but um, I do all of the same greenery. Like I don't just do pick random greeneries and arrange. I do all of the same so that I know that I've evenly spaced it and that I'm not like clustering. So I'm gonna put these guys in. So again, don't put them straight up and down. Make sure you're angling, make sure you're bending them. You're wanting it to go a little bit outside of your box. So you're gonna bend it so that it kind of comes out. Don't stay so tight within your box. But yeah, so I do the one type of greenery just so I don't like pack it in. Thank you, Stacy. Let me pin that. I'm gonna pin, pin the blog if it lets me. It's not letting me, hold on. I'm trying to pin this, okay. All right, I pinned the blog. So you guys can read, um, I wrote about the principles of arranging. Um, I also added a little fun piece about how to do the same thing in your life. I haven't figured it out. Once you read the blog, you'll see. But, um, so I'm just adding these guys in. I'm adding them one at a time um, of types so that we don't cluster and block. That way I can get rhythm without really having to um, worry about, did I put this piece in here? Did I put this piece in here? And um, we'll just know because we're only working with one at a time. But you see how grainy and leafy this gets so quick and easy? Guys, this is like the easiest type of centerpiece box you could do is doing the greens first. Um, so these are all just, just different faux leaves. I'm not gonna go into everything um, about what greenery I'm using. Um, Gail, but these ones are ficus. They're pretty um, common anywhere, basically. But um, this is not necessarily on what greens I'm using. This is just on how to arrange, okay? So if you guys have been following um, the Love Sola business page um, since I started working with them, I've been trying to do a theme of a week um, because I'm just like a themey kind of person and I love doing that. So um, we always like do the tutorial that matches the theme, which matches the blog and so on. So this one was on um, arranging. So that's why we're doing this. If you're just joining us, I can see a bunch of people popping on. So um, that is what we are doing is talking about arranging. So we worked on our greens. As you can see, look, the heights, not, not like exactly, because if I did a pattern, that wouldn't be balanced, but I don't have it heavy in one area. So can you guys see that? Can you see how it's balanced, how the deeper, thicker pieces are down below? My wispier pieces come up. Hi, Linda. Um, and do you see how it's balanced, guys? Do you see how I don't have, you know, a bunch of things coming? And you can have something spilling, like a little asymmetrical, if you want something spilling down one side. That's okay, but just make sure that you don't lose any of that weight on the other side. So as you can see, it's kind of dispersed. There's no, like hunk of one greenery in a spot. It's all kind of mixed, okay? So we've got the greens down. Does anyone have any questions about the greens and how to arrange your greens? If not, I'm gonna move on to color. And we do our flowers last in this style. So I'm gonna move on to um, color. And again, I'm gonna do all of the same color at one time. So I've got this lavender and I'm gonna do all of the lavender um, at one time to make sure that I evenly space it among my um, arrangement, okay? And what I'm gonna do, again, if you're just joining, because I do see pe more people coming on, I never go straight up and down. Even if I'm doing it in the middle and I want it tall, I always tilt it a little bit to the side. It just, flowers don't naturally stick straight, straight, straight up, okay? So we don't want it to be straight up. So again, I'm gonna take this one, if I want to balance it. It doesn't, again, you're not wanting to do like a pattern or like symmetrical, but see how if I have it on this side, I'm going to want it on this side too. Hey, Ashley Joyner. Ashley is going to be here soon in New Jersey with me. Hey, Lisa, thanks. Um, so as you can see, I'm just um, dispersing it without being symmetrical, okay? And when you do colors, it's good to do it in odd numbers, okay? So as you can see, I did one here, one here, and then one in the center. So again, this side is not exactly symmetrical, but it's still balanced, okay? You usually work in odd number amounts. So 
and um, instead of having just the two lavenders because that it just for balance it just doesn't look right I have three okay as you can see that um the next color do we want caspia in this or not I did bring up caspia before I go on to colors should I put some caspia in it or does it not need it I don't think we really need it but let me just put a little bit I'm gonna put a little bit of caspia in it um because I did bring it up I think I might just put everyone knows me knows I love caspia so I might just add a little bit this is the um this is from love solar flowers it is the yellow tipped green I'm so excited guys we have we already have some people in from the retreat um two more people come in today and then the rest of the gang comes tomorrow there's about 22 people and we are excited and we are going to do videos from retreat but it'll be in our community group so we um have a community group love solo flowers and my business cascade queen designs we have a community group and that's where we're going to do all of our fun um fun retreat videos so you'll have to join us then but anyway anyone knows i love caspia so this caspia is the yellow tipped green and i'm going to put some of that in there just because i i'm obsessed with it so okay same thing i'm going to disperse it without being patterned or symmetrical okay so like don't put it in all four corners or something so victoria um says hi but victoria is in my house today so that's why i yelled out earlier for talking loud right victoria <laughs> Sometimes I start the video and they're like still doing all their stuff, but I do have some employees here today I'm getting ready. All right. Does anyone have questions about the greens while I'm doing this? Please ask. Um, cause I want this to be a lesson. I don't want you just watching me craft. I want you guys to learn to, again, making sure you're tilting and you don't have to put the, don't put it all tilted to the same side. So see how I want some of the Caspian maybe going this way, some of it going the other way. Um, yeah. Still. She's definitely not sleeping. I woke her up after I brought the, brought the kids to school. Um, but yeah, so we are using again right now the Caspia. This is a yellow tipped green. I think it'll look nice with my mermaid collection. Now, see how I spread it, but it's not exactly the same. Like I don't have all four corners or all this. I'm just kind of making sure that a little of it goes in all the different places. But see how easy this is, guys. You can make something in 10, 15 minutes. You shouldn't be spending hours on some of these boxes. It just shouldn't happen. Okay. All right. So see how my bulky stuff is at the bottom, but my, my softer stuff is at the top. Okay. Hi, Maria. All right. We are going to now do, actually, I'm going to do some candy test. All right. Right now, Love Soul Flowers, and it only has like one left, but it has the orange candy tuft. This is green candy tuft. I think there's one orange candy tuft left. It's life. Candy tuft is like the best stuff. We're gonna try to get more um, when it's its season. Candy tuft is out of season right now, but there's like one more orange candy tuft left. So if you have fall projects and you want it, like grab it because it's not gonna be there. So again, we started with the bulkier and had that towards the base and now we're adding more of the light and airy stuff to the top, okay? You shouldn't be afraid of doing centerpiece boxes. They are fairly simple. It should not take you a lot of time. So just go. And I don't I don't like, you know, overthink things. I never take, once I put it in, it's in. I don't take things out. I just do it. So just do it like me. Again, making sure you're tilting it at an angle. Making sure you have balance by putting it on all different sides without making a pattern because pattern actually will will actually make your eye um, have some problems with the balance. So you're not wanting to do like, 
this green, that green, this green, that green, because it just, it actually doesn't, it's not very pleasing to the eye um, when it comes to floral arrangements. Um, it just isn't. So don't build a pattern. Don't worry about being symmetrical. Just stick it on in there. Um, I just need one more piece, I think. I just need a piece that's got a strong stem to jab in here. Okay, and I'm not avoiding the centers, but I'm not avoiding the sides either. Um, if you want it to, like, you know, hang out the edge, you can certainly do that. If you have, like, more vinier um, stuff, you can have it kind of spilling out over the sides. You're wanting to make sure that your colors, too, when you pick colors, um, I'm doing a dark green um, greenery. You want to make sure they go good. So even though I had the dark green, um, I added just this little sprinkle of the yellow tips on the green. So it was a green on the center of those, but you want your color to be balanced too. So do you see this? Um, it's cheap fillers though, Gail. It's really not expensive. I think right now I have like $10 of filler. I'll only have like $12 of filler. And then my flowers, yeah. So, and they, these, this size box is a pretty big box. Um, I would sell it for $65. This is actually for a bride though. So they got a little discount on it because I'm doing their wedding. Um, okay, let's see. Does this pink match this pink? Let's see. Yeah, so I'm gonna stick a couple of these pink guys in, okay? Again, if you're adding color, you're gonna wanna do it in odd numbers. So I'm going to do three strands of this pink. I'm going to put those in there. Let's take the price tag off the filler before we put it in. Put that would be silly. Silly. Do we need more pink? I don't think so, because we have a whole lot of colors in our flowers going on, so I don't want to go cray-cray. Um, let's do my white fillers. Um, I have these. Do you think these would be pretty? And I have Queen Anne's Lace. Let's do a little bit of both. So I'm going to start with the Queen Anne's Lace again because it's bulkier. So I'm going to cut three of those off. And I'm going to go not where my pink one is, okay? So again, for balance sake, I don't wanna cluster all of my colored fillers in the same spot. So what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna make sure that my white is not butted up against my pink, okay? So I'm gonna kinda go in the opposite directions as my pink was. And again, we're going to be adding flowers, so don't be worrying so much about the colors spread right now. I'm going to add a couple of these little floofy guys. I don't know if I'm going to have to, I might have to like stem them because they're on very soft stems. So I'm going to, I'm going to put them on a wire real fast. Okay, so these guys, I'm just going to wire up in like just a jiffy here and um, because they're not going to get to be shoved. Do more time. I think just these, do you want these ones? Thanks, Jill. Um, just joking, Jill's going to stem these suckers up for me um, real fast um, just because to shove it down into the thing, they have a very soft stem. So, okay. so I do want some of this height in the middle, see? I want to make sure that I'm balanced, okay? So I've got some height going on now on my sides. I want to make sure I hit my center. I'm not going to put them straight up, but I am going to put some of these taller pieces in my center. And then, um, you got the wires. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to put two of these guys together because I feel like in nature that they would be two pieces, not one piece. So, 
So I want to put these guys together just because I feel like they should grow in twos like that. Okay. If anyone has any questions about like arranging and like balance and, and yeah. And we'll talk about focal point in a minute because we talked about rhythm and balance, but we're going to, thank you. We're going to just talk about balance in a second. I mean, about focal point in a second when we get to flowers. I guess. All right, I'm going to start getting these guys ready. Yeah, share the video if you feel like people want to learn how to create centerpieces boxes. I know a lot of people do it reverse and do their flowers first. I just never found much luck with that. Um, I'm going to have Jill stem these guys too. Just those two. Or whoever, Victoria, if anyone wants to send those. Um, I like these little kind of jibby jabbies. Okay, what is it? I was just like wispy branches. But I always say wispy. People make fun of the word, my branches. overuse of wispiness. Um, so I'm gonna put these guys in. Wild branches. Wild branches. We want some like, you know, we want some crazy things going on here. I need one more of those white things. Whoa. The girls are like frantically, quickly doing this for me here. Okay, I just need one more of these. Thank you. All right. Again, making sure you're putting them, woo! Making sure you're putting them on the side um, without like it being exactly in the same place. Yes. <laughs> Sorry guys. Oh. Um. All right. So do you see how I'm balanced, guys? Do you see how like not one side has like all this crazy stuff except for the um, one white flower that I'm going to be adding to it? That would make five. See, that's why my eye didn't like it because there's four right now. Like your eye naturally wants to see things in odd numbers. Like even in nature, things tend to be in odd numbers. So that felt like it was wrong, and um, it was. So we're adding our odd number. Thank you. We are adding this fifth one, and it needs to go right here. All right. So this is what we got without our flowers, but we need to add our flowers now. Um, and then focal point. So let's talk about focal point because we talked about balance and stuff. Okay, and then we're going to um, add it again. I always do the same colors first so that I don't end up color blocking because color blocking is distracting to the eye if there's like a whole bunch of purple in one spot or not. Again, I'm also not doing a pattern. My bigger flowers will go at the base where my smaller flowers will be up higher. The same way we did our greenery is the same way we're going to do our flowers. Our bigger, bulkier flowers will be towards the center and lower. Our smaller flowers will be up higher. Okay? So I'm going to put this one to the side. I like to build, I'll show you here. I like to build a focal point um, where the front of my piece, um, where I'm going to claim the front of my piece will be. Um, so I kind of put like a little cluster. I'm going to spin it back to me and then I'll spin it back to you. Um, I usually put like a little cluster of, of bulky, of bulky, bigger flowers and that be my focal point. So I want this here. And I'll turn it around and I'll show you where I want my focal point. So I'm going to focus on this part and make sure this looks beautiful. And then I'll build all around it. So that's what I want my focal point to be. Um, and then I'm just going to start filling everything else in. Again, I'm going to, now I'm going to do all the same colors. So I'm going to put all my purples in to make sure that my purples are evenly dispersed. Same thing, the same rule about greenery, guys. It's all the same rules is that you're wanting to put them on angles. You don't want to put them um, straight up and down, okay? Even these, even flowers. Okay, and I'm just popping them in, guys, making sure that my eye can hit the purple in all different places. 
I don't do it symmetrically like I said before. I know I repeat myself a lot, but I see people coming in and out. We're up to like over 50 people right now. So um, I just want to make sure that you don't miss anything. So let me turn it around this way. Okay, so now I'm going to do this pink color. And if you've never built a centerpiece box with your greens first and you're missing out, it's so much easier, so fast. You can use less flowers. Um, and we're just going to now do this color and make sure it's balanced on both sides. You want your eye to be able to go around the thing. Bigger flowers go down closer to the base while the smaller flowers can go up a little higher. So here's some smaller ones. I'm gonna put these in the center so they can climb a little higher. Sometimes you just gotta put these on um, full stems at first and then trim them down um, when you're doing a wild box like this where you need some height. Okay. All right, flipping it around again. Now we're gonna do these hot pink ones. Make sure I get some dispersed all over. Does anyone have any questions about arranging? Please ask for your on. I see a lot of you on, so if you have questions, please ask. I want to be able to hit every question that we got while I got while you got me live here. Alright. I just want to show you how easy it is to do these guys. I do use the 18 gauge stem for anybody who might be new to this. Um, we need a strong stem in order to really shut that down into the um, foam. I just use regular floral foam. I do, do use the dry foam, not the wet foam. Ugh. Okay, we're gonna do this mint color next. I just said, okay, so I have um, on my um, on my website, Cascade Clean Design, um, the list of like the supplies that I usually use and the wire stems that I use are on there. Um, it's an 18 gauge. Thanks, Miss Amber. Um, they're 18 gauge wires. I use paper wrapped. And I just like the paper wrapped. I don't like the cloth wrapped so much anymore. Um, because when you cut it, you're fighting with it sometimes. So, all right, we're going on to the teal. And I do have, again, some of these smaller ones. And my last ones are smaller, too. And those will be up nice and high. Again, my bulkier flowers should go down below, just like my greenery was. And my smaller flowers will be up high. And I'm making sure I'm using one color at a time so that I'm evenly dispersing the colors throughout my pieces, okay? Um, are you using the same color for each color? Um, Lisa, so yes, I think we might have had, yeah, no, we, this color, this one, because I wanted to use the almonds, um, the smaller ones aren't almonds. But yes, in general, that's another way to get balance and rhythm in your, like, sight of it, um, is to use the same color for the same flower. So like all of my, Bellies were this rose color. All of my new beauties were the purple. So yeah, so I did do that, but just some of my minis that I use, they don't match the big ones just because sometimes you don't have minis that match. Okay. But that does help your eye. And um, if you're using the same, like my peonies are all the hot pink. Um, it just, your eye will flow naturally if you use, I know a lot of people who just throw a bunch of random colors and random flowers. It just, like, artistically speaking, the eye, like, 
likes to see the same things going on. Um, it also helps when you're building it because you know like how many you have and you can evenly disperse it. But as you can see, we only have one color left here and we're done. So how easy and quick was that? We used all of our principles. Okay, again, we did it in odd numbers um, for our colored fillers. This blue can kind of go up high because these are nice and small. Again, I want it to be kind of dispersed without, without it being a pattern. Okay. Oh, I have one little teal guy left. I didn't realize that. I'll get him in there in a second. Bulkier to the bottom. Lighter to the top. Things not straight out. I think we're reviewing here everything that I shared. I like my greens to come out higher than my flowers. So we want these little like spriggy things to all be higher than my flowers. Okay, because they're lighter. The flowers are bulkier than my greens. One more. Let's see where this guy can go. He can go right here. Okay, so do you see how it's balanced? It's not like your eye doesn't like get stuck on something. If you, okay, for instance, let me, let me just explain some things that could be um, imbalanced. Let me just put this one in. I'm going to show you something. Hey, Jill, can you give me just two of raw flowers? Or, or no, just bring me two of those colored flowers from that room. I just want to show them like something that would look imbalanced or a bad focal point. Okay, so do you see? I'm actually done. This guy got moved a little bit. Let me put him somewhere. Not crazy. I'm just going to show you something about like imbalanced color or focal point that's not good, okay? No, no, the same color. So like too red. So I'm just going to show you so how we're going to do it. Thanks, Stacy. Um, but look, we're done. See from the top side. Okay, see how balanced we are? See how your eye doesn't get like stuck anywhere? Okay, so just watch this, right? If I had two red flowers like this right next to it, right? Your eye would literally be looking at little eyeballs. Like your eyes puts patterns together even when you're not meaning it. So if you had like just these right here, you would go like two red circles in a row, two red circles in a row. It wouldn't be a good focal point and your eye will get stuck. So that's when, if you read the blog, um, that's pinned rhythm. So rhythm is like your your eye needs to float from side to side, that kind of thing. Okay. So when you have something like these two, like right there, it wouldn't let your eye be able to like make its way around the piece. So I'm going to turn it again to show you the focal point I built. So I made this the focal point because I made a little cluster because I'm assuming that let's say you put it on a table. This will be the front. Now I just made it the front because I wanted it. So your eye will go to that but not in a weird way. Now, let me just show you again what a weird way would be. Thanks, Stephanie. If these were right here in the front and these were your focal point, all you would see is like headlights like, or brake lights. Brake lights are red, right? Brake lights. You would see like brake lights, like right, right, right. And then that's all you would see. So you don't want to like make a spot that, now again, you can cluster colors Let's say I wanted these together because that could be pretty, those two little clusters. Let's say I put two clusters over here. Then I'd want to balance those two clusters on the other side, okay? Because you don't want your eye to get stuck on something. So that would be something that wouldn't be rhythm. Rhythm means that your eye can float around in like an easy way. If you're stuck on one thing, then there's no rhythm to your piece. Now, again, you have a focal point, but like, let's say this is your focal point, but your eye doesn't get stuck there. Like, you're not just going, oh my gosh, I just see that one white rose stuck in the middle of that and I can't like get past it. You have a focal point where your eye goes to first, but then it can easily move around the whole piece. Okay, so that's what rhythm is. So we taught you how to build a balance, but rhythm means that you're not stuck on something. You ever like look at someone's piece and go, I can't like see past those two white flowers in between the blue ones. Like you get stuck. You can't like see the beauty of the piece because you're stuck. Now, if you're looking at my piece, there's no place your eye can get stuck on. Okay. 
pattern is something your eye can get stuck on. So I didn't do any pattern, but you want to make sure there's no place to get like caught up on. Um, let's see. Depends on the size of flowers and base she also uses in her furniture. Thank you, Stacey. I must have, I must have missed a question while I was doing this. Um, so yeah, so I do do is use an odd number of flowers. Um, not necessarily of flowers, but of the fillers because um, that's what's kind of like peek through. The, the flowers, are, it's enough flowers. I think there's like 30 flowers in here that you don't necessarily like need to count that it's odd. But in general, things go in odds, okay? So as you can see, we don't get stuck. So can you see like a place? And if, if you do, if you sit back and you go, wow, my eye just keeps going to that one spot, but it's not my focal point, <laughs> then maybe you need to rearrange it a bit. Okay, because the only place your eye wants to go to should be the focal point first, but it should easily bounce around the rest of your arrangement. So I hope this was helpful, guys. Like, I've had a lot of questions on arranging, and I've wanted to do this um, for a long time. Um, but I am, like I said, I'm kind of themey, so I was waiting for the theme of the week. So finally I got to it. Um, but as you can see, is there anything when you look in the video, and again, I made this pretty quick, and I'm obviously doing it while I'm talking, but... Is there any place that your eye goes to that like doesn't feel right? Like it makes you uncomfortable? If not, then you probably have a finished piece. And if you can see, like all my colors are dispersed um, pretty evenly as, long, as well as the sizes of my flowers and the bulk of my greenery, okay? So my greenery, I'm, I'm making sure it's not bulky in one area. Yeah, I think that's kind of like the basic principles. Again, the blog talked about rhythm, balance, and um, focal point um, and of course with the blog I always like to tie it in um, I always like to tie it into like life or whatever three leaves on the left well I do want leaves to come out so I'm probably gonna leave those there but um, yeah that's my piece and this is somebody's this is somebody's I'm gonna deliver it this week so um, she picked all these colors they're fun. And that's it. Any last questions before we say goodbye and finish our day? And I didn't clean it. Um, I didn't um, glue it in because um, it is like, like I had a fair amount of wire into that foam. It won't fall out. See, I can turn it over. It doesn't fall out. So what's the least amount of color flowers you can use? Uh, Lisa, there is no... Um, exact amount but here's so here's the thing so same thing with odds when it's two colors there's something that throws it off now I'm not saying you can't have a two color thing and make it beautiful but there's a whole lot more thought that needs to go in it and how you make your clusters of colors because color blocks are sometimes difficult to the eye so two colors sometimes is difficult because you'll have like one and then a cluster and then another cluster and it it's harder now you can do two colors I just had a wedding that was just raw and red but it was difficult. Like it took me a very long time to do it because no matter where I was putting stuff, it was looking like triangles. It was looking like circles. It was looking like random. And it was like, it was really difficult. So I would say for ease sake, have three colors and raw can be one of the colors. Three colors or more is easier. Two colors is difficult because again, I think it's a lot of the things that the whole even numbers sometimes is awkward. Um, but it is really difficult to arrange a two color arrangement unless you have like fillers to break it up or whatever. It's just, you're going to constantly see things like eyeballs or, um, you know, it's just, it just makes it very difficult. So I would say if you're going to do something, try for three colors. Um, if you're only wanting two colors, make sure you use a variety of flowers then at least. Um, so again, the wedding I just did was raw and um, like a spice wine color. And I just used very different flowers in order to break it up. So I had hydrangea and I had um, the new beauty. And so those next to each other didn't look like such a clustered piece. It was very different. The hydrangea and the new beauty look very different. So I was able to cluster them in color wise, but it was still difficult. I got to say. Oh no, Deanna, um, it's okay because it'll be on um, replay. And I went through the principles of arranging, not just how, I didn't necessarily teach you how to make the piece. Well, I mean, I did, but I went more through um, principles of arranging and how to make sure your arrangement has balance, rhythm, and focal point. 
So um, I'll just do a quick review. So I have a focal point here with a cluster of flowers. Balance meaning um, I used odd numbers and thicker towards the bottom, wispier towards the top. All the height matches, even though it's not the exact same thing. So I have maybe these over here, these over here, and the height goes with each other, but it doesn't have to be symmetrical. Uh, and then rhythm means there's nothing where your eye gets so stuck on that you can't move past. It bounces around the whole entire place. So those were the principles. Please read the blog. Um, I do put a lot of time and energy into the blog because um, I want them to be um, teaching experiences, but I also wanted to bring us together as a community because I always do talk about some type of lifestyle, something in it, um, some things that I learn in life, um, and then how they relate to kind of Sola and the business. So, um, so keep your eye out this week um, on Love Sola Flowers business page. Um, and their website um, to just finish up this whole week of arrangement. Plus in our community group, um, we have a retreat. We already have some people here. They're fooling around in the back here. Um, we um, are having two more people come today and then like we have 22 people for our solar retreat this weekend and we're gonna do some fun things, but we're gonna do that in the community group, not the business page. Um, but keep your eye here in the business page because I will still be um, posting and stuff about arranging, okay? So don't miss that. All right, I'm gonna spin it around one more time and then I'm gonna say goodbye. Hey, did one of you wanna, oh, hey Jill. Thanks, Jill. Um, one sec, Jill's gonna turn off the thing for me because it's so far away, but I just wanna make you, show you one last time. And then, just so that you can see that we hit all three points that were in the blog. And um, yeah. Okay guys, have a good day.